Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to continue the special senses. In the last video, we saw about the light and dark adaptation and how the photoreceptors are working. Once the photoreceptor gets their impulse, they will be transmitted to the cortex level for the perception. So this pathway, the visual pathway is going to take them from the photoreceptor to the level of the cortex. And there are some lesions, whenever there is a particular injury at any specific region, certain type of lesions will happen. We will try to understand what is the visual pathway and their lesions in this system. So first thing is in the vision we are discussing, we will be discussing about the visual pathways and lesions. So first coming to the visual pathway. So as you can see from this diagram, the visual pathway starts at the level of photoreceptors and from the photoreceptors I told you next they will be activating the bipolar cells and finally the ganglion cells. So once this ganglion cells are getting activated, first we will discuss the pathway then we will understand their lesions. As you can see here, it will be carried next via the optic nerve. So the second structure is the ganglion cell, after that we should know about the optic nerve. In this optic nerve, as you can see here, the fibers of nasal retina and the temporal retina are having two different set of fibers. This fibers, this group of fibers which I am drawing as A, they are present on the temporal side of the retina. I am not talking about the field of vision, here I am just saying that it is in the temporal side of the retina. And these group of fibers which I am marking as B, they are transmitted through the nasal fibers. So what is happening, both of the fibers will go into the optic nerve and here after the optic nerve there is a region called as optic chiasma. This is very 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 important. Why? Because in the optic chiasma the nerves are going to cross to the other side. Will all part of the nerves cross to the other side? The answer is no. Only specific part as you can see here this is the nasal part of the right eye that is crossing over to the other side. Whereas similar thing happens to the other eye also, here in the left eye, the nasal part is crossing over to the other side. What is happening to the temporal eye, the temporal region in the retina, they will be carried to the same region. So we started with our ganglion cells, first the photoreceptors, then the ganglion cells and then the optic nerve, finally the optic chiasma wherein they are crossing. This happens around the region of pretectal region. Then from that region where it will go is, it will go to the lateral geniculate body. It is also called as LGB. It goes via the tract. What is the name of the tract? We are just studying the optic. So it is optic tract. And finally from the lateral geniculate body, it is going to go to the occipital cortex that is the visual cortex. It will go to a region called as occipital cortex, specifically the visual cortex cortex. This cortex is called as visual cortex. And in that visual cortex also, it goes to a particular fissure called as calcrine fissure. This fissure is called as calcrine fissure. So this fissure is calcrine fissure. So it is taken via from the lateral geniculate body to that calcrine fissure. What is the name of the tract? As the name indicates, it is coming from the geniculate body to the calcrine. So the name of the tract is Geniculocalcrine tract. The names are very simple. We just have to remember it comes from lateral geniculate body and ends in the calcrine fissure. So it is a geniculocalcrine tract. So let's write down the pathway. First is the photoreceptors. The photoreceptors is the first one to act upon. Then from there the ganglion cells. The ganglion cells will be carrying them. Then comes the optic nerve. Then the optic nerve. And in the optic chiasma the nasal fibers are going to cross. So the next one is optic chiasma and from the optic chiasma it goes via the optic tract. So it goes via the optic tract to reach the lateral geniculate body. From the lateral geniculate body it goes via the geniculocalcrine tract, geniculocalcrine tract to the visual cortex, visual cortex. Visual cortex where it is located? It is located in the occipital region. This geniculocalcrine tract is also referred as optic radiations. So optic radiations. So this is the entire pathway through which the optic nerve is taking from the level of the eye to the level of the brain. And now we are going to understand what happens to the lesions at various different levels. 
let's go to the next diagram it is the same diagram not now what we are going to do we are going to cut at various different levels and see what happens to the retina before going to that whenever a patient is coming to you with any kind of optical defect the patient is saying that he is not able to see his temporal region so as a doctor we will note down that the temporal field of the vision of the patient is affected so there is a difference we are not talking about the retina in the retina it might fall in the nasal side temporal side but the original complaint or the original defect is represented in the visual field of the patient or the person or the examiner so the visual field is the one which is having a defect so all the defects will be named against the visual field and not upon the retina this is very very important so before going to this fact we have to understand one more thing here you can see here the nasal field of this region suppose this is the right eye of mine the nasal field of this region will fall into the temporal part of this right eye whereas the temporal vision logically because if the rays are coming like this so the temporal part will fall into my nasal retina so the nasal field where it is going just track it back it is going and falling in the temporal retina whereas the temporal field it is going and falling in the nasal retina but ultimately what will be representing will be representing the defects against the field because that is what the patient is not able to see so will be representing against the field this is the biggest confusion why many people tend to make mistake in this questions so now let's start with our lesions let's begin our lesion first a there is a cut at the level of what is this level this level is nothing but the optic nerve so the lesion a is at the level of optic nerve in this diagram the shaded area is representing the defect here what they what we have done left eye optic nerve we have cut so any impulse can come from the left eye no none of the impulses will come from the left eye so what will happen the left eye will go for complete blindness so left eye blindness will happen this is simple because the optic nerve of the left side is cut so whatever is coming from the left side i cannot interpret it now next coming to the region that is b here where are we cutting where are we creating a lesion we are creating a lesion at the level of optic chiasma optic chiasma this is very very important i give a cut so what is happening the nasal fibers are crossing i told you in the pathway itself the nasal fibers are going to cross so when they are going to cross they are going to get cut but will it produce a nasal defect no why because as we already saw as you can track back this track we will erase it and i'll just do only this b lesion so as you can see here now we have cut the p so what is happening we will track back on this side it is affecting the nasal retina of the right eye so which field is gone the temporal side of the right eye will be gone and at the same time now this b lesion what it is doing it is getting the nasal fibers of the left eye so which region in the vision is gone the temporal side of the left side so as you can see here i gave a cut the nasal fibers are crossing but both the nasal fibers were getting impulses from the temporal side of both the field now what the patient will not see the patient will not see this temporal side also and the patient will not see this temporal side also so the visual defect is in both direction he is having a defect here also he is having a defect here also that is why this term is given to it so when the optic chiasma is cut the patient is having both the temporal field of vision loss so it is called as bitemporal hemianopia bitemporal hemianopia it is also called as heteronemous hemianopia why it is called heteronemous because this eye's visual field is affected and this direction visual field is also affected both different directions are affected so it is also called as heteronemous hemianopia now i hope it's clear because the nasal fibers are gone both the temporal is gone optic chiasma is one constant question you will always get in your viva as well as in the spotters or anywhere else because this region is highly prone for injury whenever there is a pituitary tumor because of pituitary adenoma this is the first region which will get affected because the pituitary is directly lying below this optic chiasma crossing over that is the reason this optic chiasma is very very important 
Now coming to the next lesion, you can see here, here we are going to cut. What is this? This is nothing but our optic tract. So now we are creating a lesion in our optic tract. So what is happening? Left side optic tract we have cut. Now what we have to do? We have to trace back it. Left side optic tract is carrying the nasal fibers of the right eye. So what will go on? On the right eye, the temporal vision is gone. Temporal vision is gone. While on the left eye, what is happening? Our left eye, if you track back, I will just erase the previous ones. So on the right eye, just track it back. On the right eye, it is going to the nasal fibers and right eye temporal is gone. And on the left side, it is getting the fibers from the temporal side. So the nasal side of the left eye is affected. So that is why the nasal side of the left eye is affected. Here the lesion is on the left side. But the patient is not able to see the right temporal as well as the right side temporal and from the nasal fibers of the left side. So what is happening is this one entire side the patient is not able to see. Whatever is on the right side he is not able to see because there is a left side lesion. What is happening? Both the nasal fibers which are receiving the temporal part as well as the temporal field which is received by the nasal part of this eye the whole entire region on the right side he is not able to see. That is why this lesion will create a contralateral hemianopia. Why it is called contralateral? Now I have made a lesion at the left side but my complete right field of vision is affected. That is why it is called contralateral hemianopia. It is also called as homonemous hemianopia. Why it is called homonemous hemianopia? Because one side visual field is completely affected. Now coming to the final lesion that is the D. In final lesion what we are trying to cut? We are trying to cut the geniclocalcrine tract or it is also called as optic radiation. When optic radiation is cut what it is going to produce? It is going to produce a very similar impact like that of an optic tract. So both of it will have a contralateral hemianopia. But here as you can see here there is some extra vision available in the central part. This property is called as macular sparing. So what is happening? There is macular sparing which happens during the optic radiation defect. So why is this macular sparing is happening? They have projected two reasons for it. First one is the macula of right eye is giving fibers to both the eyes. Of one side is giving fibers to both the visual cortex. So macula gives fibers to both cortex. That is one thing. And second one, even if there is an injury at the occipital level directly also, then also sometimes macular sparing is seen. So what they say is macula has dual blood supply. One is by the posterior cerebral artery and other by the middle cerebral artery. Even when the posterior cerebral artery is getting occluded, that is one of the most common cause of occlusion which is causing a visual defect. Even when posterior cerebral artery is affected, still the macula is packed. Why? Because the middle cerebral artery also supply this region. And macula, what is macula? Macula is the one which is having the fovea inside it. And fovea is the one which has a central vision. Central vision is very very important. So body has an adequate backup mechanism for that. One thing is the macular fibers are carried and they are giving fibers to both the sides. The right is giving to both the sides and the left is giving to both the sides. Second one is it has dual blood supply. Blood supply. So that is the reason why this macula uh, is getting spared in many lesions of this optic radiation as well as the occipital cortex. So let's revise back. So whenever there is an injury to the optic nerve, it is, it is the simplest lesion. You know, there is an injury to the optic nerve, it will cause that particular eye blindness. Whenever it is in the optic chi chiasma, it will cause a bitemporal hemianopia. After the optic chiasma, we just have to remember it is like, like a contralateral hemianopia and it is a type of homonymous hemianopia. And I have given a special point for the macular sparing and why does it happen. Now I will add a little more thing to this topic. So already we have seen a few things. One is whenever there is a lesion in the optic nerve, it is going to be a complete loss of blindness. And bitemporal anopias we have understood and homonymous and heteronymous anopias we have understood. Now there is something we should remember like we are just seeing the temporal and the nasal field. What about the superior and inferior fields? Do they have any speciality? Yes, they have speciality. 
the superior fibers the superior impulse are falling on the lower part of the retina and they are carried by a special division in the optic radiation that is called as inferior optic radiation from the superior direction inferior optic radiation is tracking it and at the same time the inferior ones the inferior the objects below they are carried by the superior optic division it is pretty simple like above it is going below from the below it is tracked by the above so the superior will be carrying the impulses from below and finally when they are reaching the calcarine fissure also the inferior will go to the lower bank lower bank means the lower surface of the lower part of the calcarine fissure so now we have to imagine like a 3d suppose this is the entire field the above ones are falling below and the below ones are falling on the upper region so that is how it falls and because of this sometimes what can happen is there can be a contralateral superior quadranopia quadranopia means only one quarter is gone one fourth is gone why is this happening is because the contralateral side of the superior fibers will go to the inferior optic radiation when only the inferior optic radiation is gone what will happen superior quadranopia of the contralateral will happen and this looks like pi in the sky pi in the sky so whenever the patient is looking up what is happening is inferior is having defect so he will not see this contralateral quadranopia or this one fourth of this region so that is what it happens because the below fibers are carried separately now what happens whenever there is a lesion in the superior fibers whenever there is a lesion in the superior fibers there is going to be an anopia in the inferior part because the inferior part is carried by the superior optic radiations so just remember it is going in an opposite direction so the inferior part will be carried by the superior and when superior is gone the superior optic radiations are affected what is will happen whenever the patient is looking down it will look as if there is one quarter missing in the ground like one part of the ground is missing one fourth of the ground is missing so that is called as contralateral inferior quadranopia so after this is really this is optic radiation so after optic radiation everything is going to be in hemianopia of the contralateral side usually it is hemianopia but now we are dividing them into further two branches so it is one fourth of the region which is gone so superior fibers if it is gone it will cause inferior quadranopia this is also called as pi on the floor pi on the floor pi on the floor or pi, pi on the ground so these are some additional information but if you are clear with the previous diagram that is more than sufficient these are some additional information which we have to remember i hope it's clear thank you for watching the video we'll see in the next video in the next video we'll be describing more about the visual cortex like what are the different accessory visual cortex area normal visual cortex area and what is their broadman's number and everything so stay tuned for the next video also we'll see in the next video thank you so much